I'm in Birmingham today, approximately 10 months since I last updated about the HS2 Curzon Street station. And whilst there's not a great deal to see in terms of progress at the western end, there's certainly more to see at the eastern end where the approach tracks are being constructed that will lead into the station. But before the update, I'm just going to give you a quick recap about the station and what it will mean for Birmingham. The new HS2 station in the centre of Birmingham, which has been designed by WSP and Grimshaw Architects LLP, will have seven platforms and will be able to accommodate up to nine 400 metre long trains per hour. The station is being delivered by a Maester Gardos joint venture who were awarded the contract to construct the £570 million station in May 2021. The HS2 website still states the station will be served by up to nine trains per hour, but this would only be true if a link to the East Midlands and Goldbourne Link or something similar were constructed. Otherwise, the proposed services from Scotland to Birmingham and from Leeds or the East Midlands to Birmingham simply cannot go ahead. Had HS2 been constructed to Leeds, then the journey time from Leeds to Birmingham would have been halved. And with Goldbourne Link, there would have been improved links from Edinburgh and Glasgow to Birmingham. I say would have, as presently Goldbourne Link appears to have been kicked into the long grass although the government are still insisting it is currently under review. I know I mention Goldbourne frequently, but I believe it is vital that a link from the West Coast mainline to HS2 north of Warrington is constructed if HS2 is to fulfil its potential. The new central Birmingham station will be connected to Digbeth to the south and Birmingham New Street to the west via a new tram line that will pass underneath the new station with the tram stop located adjacent to the original Curzon Street building. Access will be provided from the HS2 station to street level that will provide a convenient interchange between HS2 and Midland Metro services. The station and tram link will be at the forefront of plans for a 141 hectare £1 billion development which it is hoped will involve the construction of 4,000 new homes and 600,000 square metres of commercial space as well as delivering 36,000 new jobs. The site clearance phase of the project now appears to be largely complete and the first signs of construction proper can be seen. There isn't much to see at the end closest to Moore Street, with the main focus now being on the construction of the approach viaduct to the east. The first of 30 piers that will support a new viaduct was constructed in January, with at least a further 9 or 10 constructed since then. Curzon Street No. 3 Viaduct, as it is known, is being constructed by Balfour Beatty Vinci Joint Venture and will form the approach into Curzon Street Station. The 30 piers will support a 300 metre long viaduct that will approach the station from the east and will also carry trains over the Digbeth Branch Canal. On either side of the canal, it is possible to see two temporary truss structures that have been built that will be used during the construction of the canal crossing. Looking west from the canal and east from New Canal Street, which runs past the original Curzon Street building, it is possible to get a good view of the distinctive V-shaped piers that will support the viaduct. Now that a number of piers have been constructed, the next phase of work to build the deck is underway. A structure formed of steel and scaffolding can be seen taking shape just to the west of the canal and this will be used to build the bridge deck. The scaffolding structure will support form work that will form a mould into which reinforcing bars or rebar will be laid then the concrete will be poured to form the sections of deck. The deck is being constructed in situ rather than being made out of precast sections due to the shape and width of the approach viaduct that will fan out to connect with the seven tracks within the station. Once the concrete is cured the form work will be removed leaving a fully formed reinforced concrete span between the sets of piers. This process will then be repeated until the full 300 metre long viaduct is completed. The new station itself will also be built in part on a viaduct that will elevate the station above New Canal Street, which is where the new Midland Metro Eastside extension will run. I plan to release a separate video about the Eastside extension and progress so far in a week or two. The enormous 70 metre wide Western Concourse will provide access to Moore Street Station or onward travel eastwards to Stratford-upon-Avon and west towards Worcester and Hereford. New Street Station will also be a short 5 minute walk from the main entrance via St Martin's Queensway. Now that the construction phase is well underway, I hope to be able to visit Birmingham more often. But whilst I've got you, I'd like to ask if you would consider checking out my Patreon page or take a look at YouTube members. The support provided by Patreon supporters and YouTube members helps to fund things like travel and is greatly appreciated. And I'd like to say a big thank you to those who already support the channel. Be sure to keep an eye out for the Midland Metro extension video and future HS2 content, but I'm going to leave it there for today. Say so until next time, bye bye.
Birmingham New Street. Change here for services across the West Midlands.